Hey, it's Dan, the Auction Professor here. Hey, this is Mario. We're actually going another father and son sourcing trip today. Um, there is a, it's probably every other month, I believe, a flea market, about 20 or so minutes from our house, and we're heading out there right now. It's actually a little later than normal I would leave. It is almost 10 o'clock. You could have gotten into this flea market around 7.30 or 8, so, you know, some of the better stuff might be done. But again, I'm not rushing to get these. I'm not uh, needing any new material right now. We're just going to go out on a little adventure here, and I'm going to show you just the type of things I find, the prices I find them at. You'll see if there's anything there. Um, taking some video while I'm there as well, too. So but we're going to go over to the screen now, and we're going to head out to the flea market. You ready? Yeah. Like this. Ten on this. Ten on the hat. A lot of uniforms are really big here. Spats are ten dollars a set. Navy jackets. This one here is ten. There's a couple of spats in there too. Yeah. Not a lot. Shame on the jacket condition. Well, yeah, I sold the best kinds out of them. I bought the whole... Were they all musicians, too? Thank you. Yeah, they were all the same. They were all out of North Baltimore. Um, 1890. That's about what I would guess yeah. on that. Yeah. They have the picture. I donated one to the, the town. Historical was it the town, was it the town, like a band for the town, yes. or was it... Um, yes. That's what it was, and they have pictures of them on, by the depot playing. Oh, okay, so that makes it, sense. That's exactly yeah. what it looks like. You're missing are, some of the collar pieces. Yeah, these are the worst the of them. I sold too. all the best. I sold the best ones for a hundred and a half a, a set. Wow, that's and probably these are a decent pretty price. Little pit crew, but yeah, you're still I'd imagine. Getting, see, like this one's missing one of these. Yeah, that's on a this shame. Side. And how much you said you're selling these on? One's, this one's got both of them, though. These here, ten. Ten a piece. Yeah. This one's got a bow. Yeah, you know what you mean. We're getting to the end. I can see that. You do 25 for the two coats and then the belt and buckle? Yeah, I'll do that. You don't have a big bag by any chance, do you? I'm going to get you one. Oh, thank you so kindly. Yeah, they are. Just for what they are, if not. This, believe it or not, could actually go with them. Ah, no, I doubt it. This is 1890s all the way. Actually in pretty decent condition, honestly, but I don't know, there's no maker's mark or anything on it, you know what I mean? It's definitely 1890s. Yeah, that gives it away right there. Yeah, if that had the, the plate, you don't know what was on the front of this at any time, do you? No, I don't. I think they had little, um, they were the little insignia. Yeah, I just was wondering if you knew what it looked like. Like a heart. You inspired me. You said I need to collect something. I started a collection on the front. 
I'd get the hat for 30 maybe for the whole thing, would you do? I'll do that, make it easy. Here you go. Thank Appreciate you. it very kindly. Yeah, enjoy those. You have on that. It was sitting right here. I don't know if maybe this... <laughs> is that what goes to it, or... I don't want to be mis... mis Yeah, I'd, I'd take it for three. That's pretty interesting. Does it light up still? Yeah, I tried it once and it did light up. If it don't, no more. But I've been sitting, been sitting around for a while, yeah. All you gotta do is put a new light in there. A new low voltage light. Yeah, that's all. I seen them on the website. These are going for almost ten dollars a piece. Just like a slide, we call it. I got a little stack here. Yeah, I should have. There you go. What did she tell you? I don't. Well, she's at a dollar a piece. Okay. If you give me a better deal, if I'm yep. buying a bunch like yep. that. Yep. But I feel dumb. Man. That's fine. Is that the other half to this? 
what on, what do we take on these? Throw them in for the 20 and do that? Sure, yeah. I'll do that. How much are the records? Uh, like your 45s and then single discs out of these? Yeah, you mean like one? I just want it's like a single disc out of one of these so far. I mean just like oh one di one record? Yeah. 50 cents a piece on them. Okay, I'll take those for sure. And a uh, dollar piece on them. Okay, I got a few here. What about these albums, the 78 albums? Oh, that one's missing one. Ah, I'll still take it. Three bucks for that one. I can do that. Did you do the same on this? Three bucks? No, there's only two discs in this one. Two bucks. I do that. It's got the booklet. Five. So it's five. I got five. Ten. Eleven bucks. Eleven bucks. You got a little bag by yep. any chance? Okay, so we are back. Um, it was a great trip, honestly. We did find quite a bit of stuff, but I'm going to show you what we got. Now, this you saw. Literally, I tried to get this into the video there. Let me set this all down here. There was uh, some uniforms there, as you saw in there. They're definitely 100% circa 1880s, 1890s, all, all day long, no doubt about it. Uh, it's a musician's uniform. Uh, the pants were there too, but I wasn't impressed with the pants. Here's the musician's buckle. The belt itself is kind of rough there, but I can soak this. There is something you can do with this. But the best part here, again, I, you saw I paid 30 bucks for this literally right there in front of you. This is one of the coats. Um, let me stand up. I may not be in the video itself, but they're just massively neat coats. This one has some damage, as you see here. I will actually back that and repair that. Um, before I do anything with it. That will be something well worth the time. It's missing an epaulette. I may look for it. It's possible I could find one similar or at least replace it with something kind of like it, enough to get by. Just on this alone, the buttons are Pettibone. They're 1880s or so, um, all the way around. 1870s, even a few of these go back to. So, you know, all the way around, if I just cut off the buttons on this, I've got 10 bucks, well, not really even 10 bucks into it, um, 10 bucks or less into this one item, I should say, then. Um, I could make more than that just on the buttons. It's just loaded with buttons. And there's cuff buttons, the whole works. Um, some staff ones on here. It actually has some on the tail coat section as well, too. 1890s. This is made by the Pettibone Company. It's from Cincinnati. It's an Ohio piece, so there's no wonder stuff like this shows up around here. Um, it's from New Baltimore, Ohio. 
uh, from the way I, I gather. She had some more information on it. I actually got two jackets out of there. One's much nicer and has very small issues, if any. And then it has the arm cord as well, too. Um, but you see here, again, very nice one. She had it in a store. Unfortunately, somebody cut off the actual markings. It would have been nice to have had those up there as well. But other than that, it's pretty much almost all here. There was the spats from it again, but I didn't invest in that. I'm not really interested in the, the whole aspect of the uniform itself. I may have, but um, I've already got a buyer if I really want to sell this. Pettibone made stuff for the U.S. government as well, too. They made uh, uniforms during the Indian War era, late 1870s, 1880s, 1890s, and all the way up until, say, even almost World War II, possibly, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a really good piece. Uh, again, the damaged one I just showed you, I'll probably get 75 to 95. This one here is probably an easy 150, the way you see it right here. So just on the lot from this one person, um, throw in the buckle. If I had the pants and all, maybe I could sell it as a whole uniform. But, you know, anyway, I I'm still pretty happy with the belt and buckle here, as you see. Um, this is going to be, say, 40 bucks, maybe 50 bucks, maybe on a good day. The hat, um, again, Pettibone made many military ones. There is no difference from this one and another military one that I have. Identical, um, other than the buttons on here. So this is something you could possibly swap out the buttons. I'm not going to because I'm going to keep it with the jacket. Um, but it's rather interesting either way. Leather all the way around. It's lined. Leather on the inside here. It's all uh, wool, which, which is what it should be. So again, very good items here. Um, again, the hat, the uniforms here, over $300 return on my $30 investment. No question about it. And, and on a good day, I could go up to $450 possibly on this to the right person. Again, you have to market it to the right person. You have to have an in on it a little bit. Um, even the band on here is leather. This is a lot of craftsmanship in here. Um, I haven't tried it on. Sometimes I keep hats for just messing around and stuff like that. We do a lot of um, cosplay and stuff like that with the kids occasionally. We do photos, family photo night and stuff like that too. But anyway, so it's a real good piece here. I'm going to slide a few more things out here. And then we're going to go to a close-up here. And I'm going to show you some of the uh, small, better items too. Everything I got today but two single 45s is worth selling. Every single thing. I didn't look up the 45s. For the price I was paying, I knew I could just throw a couple away and not worry about it. Um, as long as you know what you're doing, that's not a problem. But everything I bought today, I know. Um, had before or, or um, know the price from just doing comp searches and stuff. The Proud Ones, this is like a 15 or so dollar sheet music. Again, saw it in the video. I paid a dollar a piece for these as well, too. Paint Your Wagon. Um, it's a musical, Clint Eastwood singing. If you haven't seen it, um, it's a sight to see, I should say. It's it's well-liked. Um, you know, Lee Marvin's in it. You know, you really can't complain about it. But this is the version that so sells the most. There's another stage version of this, so don't play, pay attention to that. I get the movie-related ones. This is 10 15 bucks as well, too. Again, dollar a piece. Um, for what I bought everything for, I got $112, I think, um, and some pocket change because um, I bought a couple things for a quarter that you didn't get to see. But um, Barney Google, comic book character from um, you know Golden Age era or before, say 1920s. Um, it's all there. It's a little rough. It's eight ten bucks on the on the good day, um, but it sells very quick and it always sells. So I'm not too worried about it. These ones I'm showing you are, are quicker movies than most. The Sand uh, Piper. This has um, I think it was Eliz yeah Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton couple if you didn't know that but um these always sell these are like um say eight bucks ten bucks fifteen bucks somewhere in that range i'll probably put say 1750 in bin and just take whatever i can get no problem in my book doing that you know it's going to be a quicker turn on this believe it or not i sell a couple sheet music um at least every week more than enough pays for um what i get um it's it's a good mover for us anyway I'm going to save the 45s for close-ups here. We'll do some quick ones on that. And I'm just going to show you the 78s real quick. As always, um, when I do hauls, I usually put posties when I have the records on there. I look them up. I pulled this out of one of those bins, uh, the little booklets that you saw at the very last, I think, clip um, at the Antique Mall. These were all a dollar a piece. This, this guy didn't even look through these. 78s, most people don't mess with them. They think 78s, it's going to be junk. I'm not going to look through them. They open up one or two. They all look like just junk records. I always look through them perfect example this is a vogue picture disc some of these are worth like eight hundred dollars or so 
Um, this this one I've had, and I, I think I might even have another one of these right now. I've had 20 or 30 of these. Um, again, I look and I find Vogue collections on their own. So if you're just looking for these type of records, you're not going to find that many. Um, but I do buy big collections, so I have a little in more than somebody just sourcing like this. But it's a good one. 25 bucks. I'll get out of this one here. This is uh, Norwood Smith. It's an oddball one. It's on an Enterprise label from California. The, the label alone is collected by some people. Um, this one's 75 bucks I'm putting on it. I don't know on this one. There are no comps whatsoever, but 75 bucks I feel safe. There isn't a single Enterprise disc other than an Abbott and Costello doing Who's On First that went for more than that. So I'm fairly confident on that. Um, and then again, I, I use several sites. I use Pop Psych. Uh, eBay, of course, and Discogs to check the price on these. Now, here's a call out to my patrons on my Patreon page. Um, I've talked about this, as you know, in a recent video. Um, it's Frank Sinatra, and it's a Christmas one. So, um, again, a dollar twenty-seven fifty is going to be what will um, I'll probably get out of it. Um, here's a deluxe. Now, this is the Revelers. Um, it's a 1946 disc. This deluxe one has a lot all the way up to the 70s on that same similar looking label. They go into 45s, obviously, um, at 49 through, say, 52 or somewhere in there. 53, I think it was. Um, but 27.50, I hadn't seen this one before, and I thought it was a little newer, but I'm glad I, I did take a snap on this one, too, because it's a good one. I should swap this one out for 20 bucks easy without a problem. Um, this is, uh, let's see, Clyde Lucas. Now, this is a early jazz, 1920s. It's on a hits label. Uh, it's an elite one. Um, I'm putting 75 on this one here because it's a scarce jazz. Most of his run like 30 to, say, 50 bucks minimum. So I'm going to do this one as a um, bin, 75 bucks, and I'll probably get, say, 50 minimum. Uh, the next one, anybody who's in my Patreon is going to recognize in, in, in a second. And you can see me picking it up as I talked about at the flea market right off the bat again i'm not going to go into that too much here um but uh the patrons know exactly what i'm talking about bing crosby again i paid two bucks for this you heard it in the video look it up on pop psych i'm putting 75 on this all day long um chances are depending on where i have it marketed at the best it will sell for at least 50 to 75 bucks right off the bat so again i paid 110 for everything you see here Patrons, you're going to recognize this one here. I know it's kind of greened out from the green screen, but um, you should recognize it either way. Being Crosby, uh, Merry Christmas. Again, three bucks I paid for it. Uh, Sixty bucks is what I'm going to get out of this one here too. So, um, again, we've got 110 into everything. Um, return on my investment net should at least be a thousand bucks. No exaggeration. Counting the records, the sheet music, the toys, the 45s. The postcards, which alone will pay for the entire lot. Um, there's some trade cards and some other things here. But again, let's go over to the close-ups and we will show you what we got. Okay, so here's some more of the records. These are the 45s I got. Again, two of them were 50 cents and all the rest of these were a dollar. That's average what I pay. Rock the Box by Sylvester. 37.50 is what I'm going to put on it. Oddball label to some extent. Uh, next one, Claire Ward. It's on a Nashboro label. Um, it's a soul gospel. This should be, uh, say, in the $30 range. I'm going to put $45 on it. Now, this one here is Showbiz Pizza. Uh, it's the Rock of Fire Explosion Group. Um, hopefully, you can see that with Fats and Billy Bob. It's like a comedy kind of thing to some extent. I'm putting $45 on this. The last one I had of these, I sold, I think, for $28.50. Uh, it's from the 80s. Lee Andrews and the Hearts. Uh, again, a dollar for um, all but two of these. So basically, we'll just say a dollar a piece. Uh, this one's um, Long Lonely Nights. This one's a doo wop soul classic, 2450. I'm putting on it. This is a newer pressing, but the label doesn't show up like that very often. Next one here, uh, The Times. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. That's 1250. The Flamingos. Um, Let's see here. Let's get that back in focus. Love Walked In, uh, 1999. Here's a bopper. Um, Mari Finney, uh, 15 bucks. Nothing super on this one here. We'll just leave them here. Seems to stay in focus better. Now, this is something that I see a lot. These are Continental. Uh, the label itself had... Um, Geez, um, Yankovic was on it, um, Frankie Yankovic. So that's uh, a label I always look for because he's got some that are worth some money. But this here is some Brewski 
Um, well-known person, not a lot of his show up. I'm putting 75 on these. The last couple of these went in the $50 range. I've got three different ones by him as well, too. So 150 bucks I expect minimum to get out of these. I've done this for a long time. Polka sells for me. And if they don't sell online, I do have a local person that buys them for a polka festival they do here. So so I don't have much trouble selling these uh, locally as well, too. So 15 bucks, Chubby Checker. I think, yes, yeah, School Days is on the back. Really nice copy of it, actually. These are early chests with actually silver metallic up here. That's the ones you want to look for. Those are the first ones of these. Uh, next one here is a red vinyl one. Now, this is an original 50s rainbow. It's Eddie Gin Miller. It's a uh, like an R&B kind of uh, piano solo here. I'm putting 75, and I cannot find another one of these. I'm going to have to pull up my book. It may be uh, pricier than that. I'm not sure. Some of these red vinyl ones I've sold for eight, nine hundred dollars in the past for. So you got to look those up. 9.99. The impressions. Um, Decent Soul, $9.99, Duke Baxter. So that's what I got. All of these should sell. They shouldn't be ones that sit more than, say, 90 days at the most. Um, this one here uh, is a tobacco card from 1893. They had six bucks on it. I got it for five. I'm going to put, say, 5750 on this one. And that's literally the date. That's the correct date. I know this card. I've had it once or twice before. So um, it's Climax Plug. It's going to sell. On the front side, it's actual photograph, um, one big photograph of multiple actresses. Josie Hall's on here. There's a couple other famous people on this one, too, so I'll do good on that. Now, these are trading cards from the 50s. They're reflective ones, too. I paid two for three of these. Um, I'm probably at like six bucks a piece on these, so $18 back, $15 after said and done net, so that'll be fine. Postcard-wise, I got 11 postcards for 10 bucks from the same person. Um, I didn't look at most of the postcards there. Again, I, I scanned through there pretty quickly, as you saw. I literally skipped half of um, things that I probably could have picked through just because I was limiting my time. Um, and I wasn't there trying to just pick all day. I've got a ton of stuff in back stock right now, so I'm not really hurting for uh, anything to sell. So anyway, all of these should net me at least 10 bucks. I think on average, um, yeah, 10 bucks at the minimum for any of these. This one here is from a specific place. He's even got a live deer still that he actually caught. He's got his gun. That's probably a $20 card. Here's Portage Lake, and I believe that's Portage Lake in Michigan here. Um, I'll be able to pretty much tie this down, I think, um, just by the looks of the trees, plants. I'm almost sure that's where this is. This is probably a $20 card. Main Street, Hessel, Ohio, very early one here. Um, I'm probably going to put, say, 40 or 50 bucks on that one. Train one here, again, uh, less than a dollar a piece on this. This is probably a $40 one. Now, these are pretty neat. I haven't seen these before. Haven't looked them up. It's uh, Hawaii um, eruptions, actually. It's from 1911. It was still a territory at the time. So, in fact, let's... Yeah, it's 1911, but it's actually advertising for the 1915 um, Expo. So something's wrong here. This one might be worth uh, investigating a little farther. It could be an error where they changed the date for the cancellation, but messed up this for some reason. So that's an interesting one. I'm going to have to look that one up. But either way, being a territory that we had just started to control, I figure it's going to be worth some money. Let's see. Oh, it's actually made in Honolulu from private mailing card era so this is circa 1898 hawaii this is going to be worth some money for sure um i'm not sure i'm pricing these but i'm going to guess at least 50 bucks so uh here's hunters there interesting one they all have guns even the women here a uh, dog the whole works this is a pretty interesting one i'm going to put say 3450 on that one uh, now I know where this is at. It doesn't look like this anymore. That I don't think is there anymore either. This is Mackinac Island. They filmed the movie somewhere in time with Christopher Reeves at this place. So rather interesting place. The Grand Hotel's on this island. Um, anyway, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Dry Run PA. Uh, this is an early one just by the looks of it. It's say 1900 to 1905 ish, I would guess, by the looks. 34.50 or better. Now, this one's for a dentist from Signet, Ohio, which isn't too far from here. It's rather interesting. Kids in the dentist office doing some terrible things, apparently. It's an early one, uh, like 1902 or 1904. I, I didn't get the date yet on this one here, but that's with those. So there's, say, 
250 maybe minimum on these postcards maybe even more because these hawaii ones could go for some good money here so anyway price wise again there's at least a thousand bucks return net from what i'm showing you here what i got today and again i didn't pick through everything i even the tables like these photos here that i got and i got them for basically a dollar for the single photos and then two dollars for a sheet but you know even on these i raked out again a dollar i think i paid a single and then two dollars for the bigger sheet so here's an early postcard high sierra this should do very well um, i'm probably going to be able to get it off there it looks like so i'm not too worried about that now these little corners are just tacked on there those will come right off midget racers from like the 20s um, it's kind of hard to see here but the picture's nice and clear so that's a good one uh, 1919 I'm gonna chop this one down to just around the card it's a 1919 Christmas tree photo here a cute girl reading a book she's got a doll it's a feather style Christmas tree there's actually um, I don't I can't tell it looks like candles in the tree as well too these I usually get like 30 or 40 bucks for photos like this um, one side has a girl standing on some looks like a captured French or some sort of tank there um, 1940 this one's dated but this one here goes along with the Townsend plant and that looks like it's um, uh, Huey Long right there which is the governor uh, or ex-governor obviously of Louisiana he was the mayor of New Orleans he started out the Townsend plan now this is him actually appearing somewhere um, rather interesting there's three photos basically with him right there um, him again speaking in front of a small group and then again him here and if I can pin down who some of these other folks are this might be a really good piece here these three photos could be worth a few hundred bucks believe it or not so this is just pure luck of the draw on stuff like this it's later on in his life but still it's a good piece he was a well-known and well-liked politician he had this plan to actually uh, give folks over 60 uh, two hundred dollars just from the government um, a month for retirement so they'd be you know well off at the time so anyway and then this card here has a world war one soldier complete with a springfield rifle his mills um, uh, ammo belt rigging the whole works he's just totally decked out really nice image clear that one should be uh, fairly well there's a few um, uh, photo booth uh, photos on here too and a couple interesting ones on the back but the only one I'm really concerned about is the uh, soldier one here for two bucks that's a good 15 bucks all day let's see we showed you those let's pull a few more items here now these were in a big dump bin and you can see some more here so um, I sat at the end and I dug through a bunch of these and there was probably a ton more I could have dug out but I wasn't willing to spend a ton of time I tried to buy them all I just wasn't willing to go up that high it was a risk buying these um, in big bulk because who knows what was in there um, without digging every single one out but this is a Lido tank last Lido I got out of these and it's a 50s one I think I got like 40 bucks out of the last one of these so it's been a while I haven't seen one of these usually I find the marks so that was pretty interesting here Friar Tuck from the uh, Marks playset uh, it's an early one too well detailed on this one now here is a uh, Mark Serial one. Again, I paid 17, actually 20 bucks for the molds. And then all of these, including the tank, were 20 bucks right here. So I could have probably got a better deal again if I haggled a little bit more, but I wasn't willing to go back and forth. I knew I was going to make a ton of money on these. The molds, I'll show you in a second. Those are the best part. But this is from a cereal. This is a giveaway from, say, the 50s or 60s. Marks, I believe, made this as well. I'll probably get like 25 or 30 bucks on this one here. Uh, that's not even the best one out of these. Let's get the molds out of the way real quick. Now, these are molds to actually make figures in uh, lead. Well, we, we wouldn't use lead. I could use white metal. Um, I'm not even sure who that is, but either way, it's a nice looking vintage mold, still usable. We still use these. My son can melt metal and, and make these. And then here is a Crusaders era uh, knight that you could cast as well, too. Now, there may be some markings on the base of the um, figure that will show up on the um, stand of this. I'll have to look that up when I cast one. We're going to cast one of these just so we can sell it better. Um, I'd probably get 15 or 20 bucks minimum a piece on either one of these molds. That's average on those. You can look them up. I'll show you the next best thing here um, that I found. There's some little particles from that paper. But 
Um, let's show you the first figure I found on a little lot here. Now, this figure I found, and most people would think it's not much at all. I knew instantly what this was. This is a 1950s Marks, and it goes to a set. And I started to look through there. I found the second one to the set. Then I found this part, which is the stretcher. Now, if you know your toys at all, and I'm sure there's some Marks people out here that watch because I've talked to a few, you'll know that this is the original Medic uh, set from the 1950s version of the Marks toys. You want the, this version. Now, there's other versions they always sell, but the version without them having feet is the best one. There's versions of Civil War soldiers and other soldiers without the, not feet, I should say, but without the base. They don't have any base down there in the bottom on these figures here. The ones that have the base, they sell for less than this one here. Um, the only part that I'm missing was this, and I found them all in the same box. This guy alone is worth, say, 25 bucks. Just this dude. So basically, they're carrying the wounded soldier. I've had this one three or four times. I knew instantly what I had. This is like 45 bucks. Just these these four pieces here: the stretcher, the the wounded soldier, and then the two carriers. So, and even while I was there putting this out on the counter, the guy standing behind me who wanted to look at the figures afterwards even said that's a good find. This is, again, 45 bucks. This will flip really quick. I might even put, say, 60 on it because on a good day, this might go for 60 bucks, this set here. So that's another good piece out of here. Now, these I find all the time. I get about four or five bucks a piece out of each one of these. On a good day, I might uh, do a little better than that. I might sell the set. Now, this is from like Davy Jones or the Frontier sets or one of those sets, maybe War of 1812 or something. They reuse these. These are marks, 100% all the way. Here's an early um, marks, I believe, or it's an Auburn, one of the two. He's got something maybe missing out of his hand. I've got more to this set, so I, I figured I'd just throw that one in here. Here is a fireman from another set. Now, I'm going to clean this one up, and I've shown you how to clean these up in another video. Um, so just holler back to that if you get these and you want to know how to clean these up. These will look almost as brand new, as will this one here when I'm done. So um, this one's here is an early, like, say, 50s as well, too. I haven't seen this one before, this pose anyway, with the stand on it. He's probably 15 bucks or better on that one as well. I've got some Indians here, Native Americans, um, pardon me. Um, these are all marks. They're all marked on the bottom, as you can see. Uh, 15, 20 bucks on that lot there. I've got more to this set here. His gun tip was broken. I wished I would have saw that before I got it, but I'll throw him in with a lot. Here's General Lee. Um, pardon me, let me get him down there. General Lee. He's got a little bit of damage, but he still will sell in a lot. Here's a real nice Marks, early 50s Roman. Um, I've got a few more to put with that as well, too. Somehow that got in there, but no big deal. And here's another decent looking one. His saber's gone, unfortunately, but it would have went well with the other one. And then the Mickey, of course, here as well, too. So Mickey, I can usually get about 14, 15 bucks. So just on the toys here, geez, there's let's say 150, 160 ish just on these little toys here. Again, 20 bucks on those. And then I've got some more here still. Again, this is just this one trip. We were in there for about an hour and 20 minutes. And I have about, say, 40 minutes in total drive time. This one I bought in the beginning, which you can see. It's actually a St. Christopher pin. And the weird part about it is it looks like a military-style pin of some sort. I'm going to clean this one up. It's probably, say, World War I-ish by the looks on it. Maybe it's a little later than that. Yeah, but it looks like World War I. There's an early-style car. There's an early-style plane and boat on there. I have not seen this one. This one could possibly even go on a uniform of some sort, possibly. But either way, I paid 3 bucks for it. I'm going to put, say, 50 or 60 bucks minimum, maybe even, say, 125 A lot of these religious items like this, the medals and stuff, the bizarre ones go really well. I just sold a little tiny one. I'll probably have out in a video a little tiny religious one for 30 or 40 bucks, and I do that all the time. Uh, next one, Huckleberry Hound, silver-plated um, Hanna-Barbera characters. I paid three bucks for two of them. I'm going to get about eight, eight to, say, ten bucks a piece for these. In season, I'll get better on, say, fourth quarter, but I'll probably just list them anyway. Um, I can't remember the name of this, this doll here. Um... Uh, Kittles, I think maybe it's a Kittles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they were sold in like necklaces and stuff like that. I've had a ton of these. Yeah, I think it's a Littles Kittles. This right here will probably get me six, eight bucks, maybe minimum. Um, probably a little higher than that. 
Um, next one here is a Ohio. Um, this this would have been tagged onto a gas pump from like the 30s or 40s. It's a county tag to say that it, they pay their taxes on it. Once cleaned up again, for those of you in my Patreon group, I showed you how they clean these up, and that's exactly how I'm going to fix this. You will see this looking like new before it goes back up without any damage whatsoever. Um, it'll look pretty much spotless, but again, my patrons know about how I do that. This is um, a good piece here. The last one I sold for $34. I paid a dollar for this one. Uh, let's see here. This goes from one lot. Uh, and then these items here, I paid um, five bucks for all of these here. Now, the reason I paid that for them is because of these. These are um, VFW tags. I've sold some of these VFW tags here for well over $100 a piece. There's some round ones with like a like a domed plastic lid to it that would have still been a keychain, but um, these ones are mostly what you'll see. So anyway, this is from 1949. It's a, it's a matching pair. Usually there was two of them. VFW's on the back. Sometimes I'm lucky enough, I'll get a whole bag of these for like 15 bucks, like 50, 60 of these, and those are worth buying too. Every one of the sets I sell very well. I'm putting, say, 45 bucks on these two, and they're basically key tags. When you donated to the VFW, they would give you these. And in that same bag, there's two more sets. So, again, I'm going to make some good money on it. I'll probably get about 15 or 20 bucks on, on this set. And about the same, 10, 15 bucks on this one here. They're all Ohio. Here is a, I'm not going to open this. It needs to be cleaned up. But it's a pocket knife. They swing out. So, it's just rather interesting. That can be removed very easily. It's actually a mother of pearl, it looks like, um, embedded in there. So, this will be polished, buffed. Um, I don't want to try and yank it out, but there's a knife in there on both sides that swing out on it. I've never seen one quite like this. 10, 15 bucks, I figure I'll get out of it. And the last piece here is a radio station piece from Bowling Green, Ohio. Some kind of cooking show. Um, it was rather interesting. They might have had a TV show that matched it. This is probably, say, 50s as well, too. 15, 20 bucks minimum. So, well, actually, hang on. I got a couple more items I forgot. There you go. Next one, psychiatric aid for the Mount Vernon State Hospital. Let's see if we can't keep them going on here. Now this is a, I'm going to have to look up the kind of plane this is, but this is like a advertising tie tack for um, the makers of this plane. I have to get a loop out because there is something written on it. It could possibly be gold for like a exec or something. If that's the case, it's going to be worth some money here. Um, and then one other piece here. This is very heavy for its size. It's a 4-H pin. It's gold-filled as well, too. I know this one's a little hard to see. Um, but for the, the price, and these are like 8 bucks or so on a good day. So, But that's the haul then itself. So you can see the value. Again, there's at least 1000 bucks in this. Well, there you go. That's what we found. Um, that's the haul. Again, we went late. I wasn't really worried about finding a huge score today. We did extremely well for how late in the day uh, went by. So hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.